What's up everybody, John and Kat from Old Running Farm here. Thanks for joining us. In today's video, it's going to be some blabbing. <laughs> and uh, so we, one of the questions we get a lot is, how did you guys get started with alpacas? So today, we're going to just kind of hang out with our alpacas and tell the story of how we got started with alpacas. So we got started three years ago, 2019, and it all became because of some late night Craig's listing by someone. Well, which is not totally true, but Catherine found our, our first lead on alpacas on Craigslist. Uh, but we were originally talking about getting sheep, uh, and that's sort of how the whole thing started. Because um, we knew we wanted to have farm animals, but we were absolutely not interested in meat animals of any kind. We're not Also goats. Yeah, we're not really interested in milking. Um, milking seems like a lot of work. To us, we both have full-time jobs, so like the daily commitment of like needing to milk and also like needing to like impregnate animals. Right. In order, and we don't drink a lot of milk, so like, what are you really gonna do with milk? So, that landed us pretty squarely in fiber world. We had talked about goats, but uh, since they're prolific escapers, we decided that wouldn't really be a thing. And then uh, one year. Or we, we had gone to the Big E, which is the Eastern States Exposition in Springfield, Massachusetts. And if you're anywhere on the East Coast, you should absolutely go to it. It's super fun. It's a lot of fun. And uh, in one of the exhibitions of farm animals, they had alpacas. And the general thing was they're friendlier than llamas, even though they're not, like, you know, super cuddly. You know, obviously, they're friendly enough to just hang out with us right here. So then we kind of figured out maybe alpacas would be a good thing and um you know we were looking at buying a barn or building a barn and that was actually the first big thing that i'd ever built which was exciting um so like in actuality getting the alpacas was like a really big start to old reading farm because i think our first youtube video was the time lapse of us the painting the fence yeah if you want to watch a really <laughs> boring video <laughs> Yeah, it's like four or five minutes of us just painting the fence in time lapse. And we showed it to my mom, and she's like, "This video is too long." We were like, "It's only five minutes long." <laughs> so, she said that. Yeah. Joanne. Because it was boring. I think what she meant by long was boring. I thought just watching the dogs follow us around the yard that was pretty funny. Yeah. But anyway, so we built the alpaca barn, and uh, the next thing was to get the alpacas. So we had started looking at uh, Craigslist for alpacas, and Catherine had found uh, someone who was looking to get rid of two, but they ended up being like really pushy and trying to get us to get them right away. But we didn't have a barn at the time. We also didn't have a fence up at the time. Right, so there were two. Like the two things that you really need. Right, so uh, I think we ended up expanding our search and we found this place called Memory Makers Farm in New Jersey, mm -hmm. I forget where where in New Jersey, yeah. but it doesn't really matter. And then I ended up calling the guy and spoke to him for like 45 minutes just about alpacas in general. They were the, the people who actually got us our first set of alpacas, which were marshmallow, mocha, and pumpkin. As marshmallow comes over here right now. Good timing, marshmallow. Let's see if she can come say hi. Come here. A little bit, yeah. So this is marshmallow. She was the original like herd leader. She was the boss lady of the original three. Now she's just kind of one of the pack. And uh, yeah, so we started with three. And Marshmallow, Mocha, and Pumpkin were all Surreys. That, that breeder does Surreys, and the other kind is Wakaya. So the only three Surreys we have are those first three that we got. Um, and after we got Marshmallow, Mocha, and Pumpkin, we knew we wanted to get some Wakayas. Oh, so this is Macy right here. Good timing, Macy. Um, so eating out of this hand is Macy. She um, she and Linda came to us from a farm called Rosehaven Alpacas, mm -hmm. and they were also very nice. They were in New York, um, and these were the last two alpacas that we ever bought. Yes. So we, we got a good price on Macy and Linda. Macy was unbreedable for that farm, um, so they let her go at a good price, and they kind of packaged her with, packaged her with little Linda. Um, and that's, those were the last alpacas we ever bought. After that, we joined a Facebook group that was called Alpaca Rehoming No Sales. Mm -hmm. um, and so it's for people who are like getting out of alpacas or they need to downsize their herd or, you know, 
<laughs> for one reason or another. Um, <laughs> that kind of thing. Yeah, so we got 10 alpacas from one farm in Vermont. We got, we became really good friends with Dawn, um, who has given us three alpacas. Our shearers gave us two alpacas. We, wherever Maggie is, we got her from, oh yeah, over there. <laughs> We got her from a farm who wanted to breed her because they wanted more greys, but she was too old, so she didn't take, so they um, wanted to rehome her. Okay. There was somebody in our town who knew that we had alpacas um, and wanted to... Why, why did they want to get rid of Cookie? Uh, hey, Cookie. I forget exactly why, but I think they, they were I think they were downsizing also. Yeah, so... That, that Facebook page has been a great resource yes. for us. It's been really great to grow our herd so much. Yeah. That, that. Brownie! Well, it also happened like, so as soon as we bought this property, maybe like a week after, where we have 40 acres, and Catherine went on that Facebook group <laughs> and like, hey, so we have 40 acres now, so send me all of your alpacas. Yeah, and that's how we got the 10 from Vermont. We yeah. did that in two batches of five. Well, that's that's also how we got our little little guy, Felix. Yeah, that's true. Brownie, if you're going to act like that, you can't be over here. Um, Brownie. Yeah, and that also put, like, you know, enough pressure on me to get the barn built Quickly, and fence yeah. all done. Right. You know. John works better with a deadline, like most people. Yeah. What were we going to talk about? The barn? Uh, the, how we got boys. Ah. So, when we brought the Vermont, the original Vermont 5 home, two days later, or three days later, I forget exactly what. A Sunday to a Wednesday. So that's three days. Uh, we found little baby Felix born <laughs> on the barn floor. And, like, at first, I wasn't sure what it was. I thought, like, maybe he was, like, a raccoon or something. But anyway, he did not look as cute as he does now. Um, so, you know, it was re it was great to have him, and super thankful to Catherine for like knowing what to do, and you know, just doing a really good job. And thankful to our vet that, that was able to come out that day. That was great. You know, that that gave us kind of a conundrum too, because boys and girls can't be together. So, you know, it was fine in the short term. But in the long term, we needed to find a solution for the boys. So we found our shearers had two boys that they were going to give us, so we were able to take them in. But then again, Felix was too small to just throw him in there. So we ended up having to get two other little boys to make a herd for Felix so had that he to. could be comfortable. <laughs> what? I said we had to. No, we did. We did. Well, the, the, I think the only other option would be to rehome Felix. Yeah. So we didn't want to do that. None of you all did either. Let's, <laughs> let's be honest. So um, we ended up with uh, Waffle and Winston, and uh, that was again through our friend Dawn, hooked us up with one of her friends in, in New York who uh, was looking to downsize a little bit. So we got those two dudes. So now we have what six dudes over there? Yeah, because we got Carl from from Dawn also. Oh yeah. And Carl is just the best guy. And uh, you know now we're here on. 40 acres we're working on our our third pasture and hopefully we start to get some grass so alpacas are pretty uh low maintenance for the most part they just you know in our neck of the woods there's uh meningeal worm which they can get uh in the presence of white-tailed deer of which we have a lot so we have to give them once a month shots uh, for that which at this herd size it is a lot uh, a lot more than it used to do, and there's a lot of poop, and, you know, I think when we're done filming this video, I need to do some cleaning. So, um, but other than that, you know, if you're looking for a, a nice little, you know, farmy livestock animal, alpacas are really nice, and uh, you just need to get, start with three. All the same gender. All the same gender. Get them a nice fence, you know, somewhere they can go to get out of the, the rain if they want. And you know, oftentimes I'll come out here and they're just standing here in the rain as if nothing's happening. But then other times, they'd rather be in the barn, so go figure. But they're very nice, pretty low maintenance, and everybody loves them. Yeah. So. All right, guys, thank you very much for watching this video. We really appreciate it. Please give us a like, leave us a comment, let us know what you think. And as always, thanks for stopping by. Yeah. So. And we also, you know, 
We were talking about goats. Yeah. We ha Be nice, Susie. Be There's somebody in our town. Whoa. <laughs> So anyway, so that's how we ended up with our two herds of our alpa uh, al well, al alpacas. Let me face this way because there's some semblance of green in the background. You think that's going to work, Catherine? <laughs> Sorry, selfish. <laughs> Bye! Why are you so awkward? Am I? I slapped Brownie, that's why oh, I was awkward. Yeah, I went why are you slapping our alpacas? Yeah. Slap packets. Connie, you never come to eat out of the hand. <laughs>